Hello there YouTube, it's Maxo Diddley here and today I'm here with another Java tutorial to help you get that A in your coursework. So today we're going to be doing verifying a user login. So this is going to be pretty simple, we basically have a username and a password and we're basically going to check if the username and the password are in the same record in a file which we have called members.txt and we are making sure that the username and the password match and that they exist. We're basically going to be doing some simple file searching to verify data. Not validate, verify. The difference between validating and verifying is validating is making sure the data is reasonable and verifying is making sure the data is accurate or also known as correct. For an example, when you're asked to give a password, you might have specific requirements, like it has to be six characters, it has to have a capital and a lowercase, it has to have a number. And I could type in a password that matches all of those criteria to log into an account. However, many passwords can, can match that criteria and therefore, if we only add validation, anyone could log into any account as long as they had a valid password. Now let's say that my account had a password of 123 and we try to log in using a password that's valid but isn't 123, then then you won't be able to log into my account and therefore it will be safe. As the password you typed in, yes, it meets all the criteria for a password. However, it's not the same as my password. So verifying is ensuring something is something type thing. And now we got that difference out of the way. Let's get into coding a simple system for it. We might have another video go into more detail, more complexity, but for now, let's keep it simple. We have members.txt here. We have the username, then the password. Yes, we could have a lot more fields, but this is for simplicity. We already have our variables initialized here. We're, we're going to put in our username as Bob69 and put in the password 123. That's going to be our sample data. So let's create our method. So you want to do public static. I can't actually type today. Void verify login. They want to do string username, string password, and string file path. So what's this method going to be doing? It's um, public, therefore anything inside this class can access it. Void indicating that we're not going to return the value. This is a procedure. We only want to do something, not give a value back. We could give a value back if we wanted, but not for this. We called the method verify login. It's going to take in a string and we're going to call it username, a string, and we're going to call it password, and a string, and we're going to call it file path. The first string sh will be taking the value of username. The second string will take the value of whatever the password is, and the third string will take in the value of the file path. So in this example, string username will just be Bob69, string password will just be 123, and string file path will just be members.txt. Hopefully that makes sense. Now we need a boolean. And we're going to call it found and we're going to set it to false. This is just going to tell Java when we find um, the particular record with the login details. So then we can stop searching instead of having to search the whole file even if we've already found it. Just think of it this way. If you were going to search for a phone number in the yellow pages and you found your number halfway through the book. You're not going to just read the other half of the book, are you? That's just inefficient. Again, it's inefficient here. So that's why you're going to use this boolean. We want to have string temp user username. And we're going to set that to just that because I, I just like doing that. We want to have string temp password. And we're going to set it to that. Now we're going to have a try catch because we're going to do some file handling. And before we move on, I just, above our main method, I want to make a scanner. So we want to do pr private scanner, no, private static, sorry, scanner. And we're going to put X. We can call it anything. I'm calling it X. We want to right click on scanner and fix imports. Fixing the imports just imports the library for us so we don't have to bother typing it out. Very handy if you forget the library names, like me. Now we want to, uh, underneath our try, we want to put um, catch exception E. Then after that, just do that. 
So we've got our try and catch set up so we can put all the fine link codes in here, then put here if we encounter what we do if we encounter an error. You should be familiar with try catch. If not, I will actually make a tutorial explaining it all. So, we want to firstly set up uh, object to read the file. So we'll do x equals new scanner and what? Yeah, equals new scanner, new file, file path. Semicolon at the end, then we'll use x dot use, use delimiter, and we want to set it to this pattern, square bracket, comma, backslash, n, square bracket, and then put a semicolon at the end. Now we want to right click on file, we want to click on fix imports, and that imports the Java IO file library. This object is going to be the thing that's actually going to read the file. Think of it as you, if you're going to be searching through the yellow pages. The next sort use delimiter is basically, basically saying, okay, each field is going to be separated via comma. So when we actually read through the file, it's instead of having to manually split Drake and the password for Drake, which is 4545645, we can basically tell this object to, okay, read and then stop at a comma so it'll read drake then it'll stop at the comma the next thing the next separate field will be what's ever after the comma until the next comma or new line and it'll just read that instead of having to manually split it's just so much quicker yes you cannot use this all the time but it's when you can you might as well use it using built-in methods gets you marks kids it's also very quick now you want to make a while loop to actually loop through the file we're going to read. So we're going to do while x stop has next. If I can actually type in brackets nicely. And not found. By the way, in most programming languages, an exclamation mark means not. Which is the opposite of a true, by the way. Now you want to do temp user name equals x dot next and we'll do temp password equals x dot next now we want to have an if statement in here as we've basically read the whole record now we need to check we we'll want to do if temp username dot trim dot equals username and temp password dot trim dot equals password dot trim. Oh, and we've got to put a dot trim by the username. There. If that's a lot to type in, you get confused. Pause the video because that is quite a lot to type in, and it's all very similar. So I fully understand. And then here we just want to put found equals true. So let, I'm going to explain what this little loop is doing. So inside this loop is code to basically read a whole line in this file, also known as a record, as we put one record per line. And one record basically consists of a username and a password. So temp username equals x dot next is basically saying, okay, read the next thing until and stop at a comma or a new line. So it's gonna read Drake. And that's gonna be stored as temp username. Temp password is basically saying, okay, read the next thing until the next comma or the next new line. So it's gonna read this number and save it as temp password. Then we're basically gonna remove all the spaces from from these things, if there are any spaces, as they are irrelevant. And then we're going to be like, okay, does the username that we read here equal the username given to us before? So is Drake equal to Bob69? No, it's not. So that becomes false. Then we got temp password.trim dot equals password.trim. And basically we're saying, okay, is this password, after we remove all the spaces from it, the same as the password the user entered? And the user entered 123, therefore this becomes false. So we got if false and false, found equals true. And that's not going to execute if false and false. 
because false and false equals false. The if statement only executes if it's true. And the only way it can be true is with two trues. And we're going to keep repeating this process. So we'll read Bob69 and 124. Is Bob69 equal to the username? Yes, it is. Is 124 equal to the password? No, it's not. So we're not going to print true because, you know, it's not true. The password doesn't match. Otherwise, if it did, you could log in with an incorrect password. And that Bob wouldn't be happy with that. And we're going to keep repeating the process until we find Bob69. Is Bob69 equal to Bob69? Yes, it is. Is 123 equal to 123? Yes, it is. So found will be set to true. And we're going to break through this loop as found is now true. Does that make sense to you guys? If it doesn't, ask in the comments. I'll actually give you really loads of help. But you should be familiar with how to loop through a file. After this, we just want to put x.close, just to close the file to free up memory, as we don't have the file open if we're not actually using it. Then we'll do system.out.println, and then we want to put found. We're either going to print true or false. So if we find the file, it will print true. That means the login was successful. If we print false, then the login was not successful. So let's just quickly run this to show you what it's going to do. Oh yeah, and we oh yeah, I'm a dumb person. Firstly, we got to put in here system dot out dot uh, dot print ln and just put error. So that's if something happens, and instead of having the program crash, we just say error. And now we need to actually call the method. So we'll do verify login, and then we want to put in username, password, and file path. Like I discussed before, username will be the first value, password is the second one, file password is the third value, matches this order. Now we click play, and it says true. Because, as I explained before, these login details match the login details here. Let's just put the passwords 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And if we run it, it will say false. As... There is no Bob69 username in here with the password 12345. That's just a little example of, an, of a potentially incorrect input. So anyway, guys, I hope that helped a lot. Um, if you've got any questions, leave them down in the comments below. If you've got any requests for any tutorials, also leave them down in the comments below. I'll help happily do them. If you've got any improvements, also leave them down in the comments below. Um, you can leave a like if you enjoyed it. You don't have to. It doesn't matter. YouTube algorithms, like, likes really don't mean anything. So it doesn't matter that much. Um, why not subscribe if you do enjoy this and want to learn more Java, either for just a hobby, for your coursework, for an exam you got coming up. Or if you've got no anyone who's interested in it, then feel free to. Anyway, guys, hope you have a great day. And um, it's Max Diddly here, hoping you have a diddly day.